If you're in higher level and you're doing the astrophysics option, then you have two extra topics to learn about, uh, one of which is nucleosynthesis. So uh, what nucleosynthesis actually means, this is making uh, nuclei. So in other words, this is uh, the process in stars where they actually make new elements. Uh, so that's really what we're talking about here. So first of all, we have a... Um, well, we have kind of three main things. We have before the main sequence, during main sequence, and after main sequence. So before main sequence, here we're start, uh, talking about the conditions needed to uh, start having a star. So uh, what we mainly have is uh, hydrogen gas. And uh, we can say then that uh, what happens is the hydrogen gas, um, let's say it's just floating around in space. And if there's enough of it, uh, the gravitational attraction between different hydrogen uh, atoms is going to, well, they're going to attract and then make a denser um, hydrogen cloud and then denser and denser. So the idea is that the hydrogen gas uh, gets dense and hot enough to initiate fusion. This is really what happens. So to initiate fusion. Okay, so here, like I said, just imagine you have some hydrogen floating around in space. And what happens is, uh, gravitationally, they're all attracted to each other. So they end up clumping together. And it gets dense enough. In other words, there's enough um, mass per unit volume to where, uh, and also it's hot enough to where you can actually have fusion. And fusion is the process uh, by which you start uh, converting hydrogen to helium. So once you have it start burning uh, from hydrogen to helium, then you're in the main sequence. So here, uh, let's say, um, yeah, the star fuses hydrogen to helium. This is the main process going on in uh, in a star here. It's uh, well, I guess we'll just, we'll call it fusion. Because I don't want to say fuses. I don't want to cause any confusion. Ha ha ha. But this right here is mainly what the star is doing. It's converting hydrogen to helium. And of course, it gives off energy. And uh, there's also lots of light. And there's lots of heat. So what uh, the, the process that does this is actually known as the PP cycle. Not as if you're going to the bathroom, but it's a PP as in proton-proton cycle. And that's because it's not just one hydrogen atom that makes a helium. It's actually a cycle where you need a few hydrogen atoms um, and you need to sort of repeat this cycle. Uh, so that's not as important to know, but just be, do realize it's called the proton-proton cycle. And that's mainly what's happening here. Now, during the main sequence, the star itself is stable. Remember in the HR diagram, uh, that's when it's, so this is luminosity and this is, let's say, temperature, but it could also be color, it could also be spectral class. It's located somewhere here in this main sequence. Okay, that's this MS, main sequence. During this time, then, it's in hydrostatic equilibrium. This is the key word here. And what that means is, I talked about this before in the uh, SL part, but basically in the star here, you have this constant battle uh, between the outwards pressure due to the luminosity, right, because there's actually radiation pressure here. It's actually because of the luminosity of the star, it's pushing outwards, but you also have this inwards gravitational force. Okay, and that's because it has its own uh, matter, and matter attracts. So you have this gravitational force going in. And when it's in hydrostatic equilibrium, oops, my U look like an N here. Uh, when it's in hydrostatic equilibrium, what this means is that it's nice and happy. The outwards forces are equal to the inwards forces. And so as a result, it's sort of, it's stable. It's sitting there happily burning away. It's burning hydrogen to helium. So that's what goes on during the main sequence. But of course, at some point, it runs out. 
It runs out of hydrogen in the core. Okay, so within the core of the star itself, it runs out of uh, hydrogen to burn. Now, there will still be some hydrogen left over on the outsides, and that's why it can still actually burn hydrogen to helium, but it'll be in a shell. What happens in the middle, though? Just imagine this, and it runs out of helium, uh, sorry, hydrogen in the core. And because of that, then, it's not going to have as much outwards radiation pressure, but it still has lots of mass. So what happens? The outwards force sort of loses, and so that means that gravity takes over and it compresses. So core compresses, or we can say the core collapses, and then it becomes, of course, now when it uh, compresses and collapses, then the core can become uh, dense and hot enough to fuse helium. In other words, now we start the next process. In other words, in order to have hydrogen fusing, uh, in other words, in order to have fusion of hydrogen into helium, you need a certain temperature and density. And of course, when you run out, then what happens? Well, you don't have enough uh, temperature or density to fuse that helium then that's sitting there. So what happens then? The core collapses because gravity wins. And then the core then becomes hot enough and dense enough to now start actually fusing helium. So that's what happens there. Um, so this is actually going to be a, well, I guess we'll say helium to heavier. So what happens is it's fusing uh, helium to heavier uh, elements. Some of these elements, I mean, it can end up making like carbon and nitrogen and oxygen. And that process is actually called the CNO cycle because there's lots of carbon, nitrogen and oxygen and they're all sort of mixing in. It's a big complicated process and cycle. But the main idea is it gets hot enough to fuse uh, helium. Now, of course, when it does this, then it becomes a red giant at this point. Because what's really weird, this is a weird process here, when the core collapses and becomes dense and hot enough to fuse helium, the outer part of the star cools and expands. And this may sound really counterintuitive, that when I said that it starts to burn uh, helium to heavier elements, it turns out what happens with the outer parts end up actually expanding. And of course, when they cool, remember about temperatures, that if something is really hot, it's sort of white or blue hot, and if it's cooler, it's red. So because it expands, and because it gets cooler, right, this is, this makes it a giant, the word expand, and the cool that becomes red. So that's why it makes a red giant, which means after it's left the main sequence, the main sequence is mainly burning hydrogen to helium. Once it leaves the main sequence, it's going to go up to this. It's going to go up to the red giant stage, RG. Now again, it's going to actually be a complicated process. It doesn't just go directly there. It goes through a lot of steps, but the main idea is it's uh, anytime it's fusing anything other than hydrogen in the core, then it's left the main sequence. Of course, a lot of other things happen afterwards. So uh, we're going to talk about that in the next video.